from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first are Regimal Joseph and Robin Francis from London, Ontario, for the intentions of their daughter, Carmelina Mary Francis, and their son, John Paul Francis. The second is an anonymous donor. The third is an anonymous donor from Mississauga, Ontario, for her personal intentions. Our thanks to the donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed to the ground. Abraham said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. The Lord said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed. He said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and began to serve him. That evening, they brought to Jesus many who were possessed with demons and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was preparing some reflections for today's homily, the readings led me to reflect on the great importance of prayer. Prayer, the sacraments, confession, the rosary, consecration to Mary are also very important during these times, very difficult and challenging times. Very inspiring are the words of an early Christian writer, Tertullian. He reminds us of the great power of prayer. Here he writes, prayer calls back the souls of the dead from the very journey into death. Prayer gives strength to the weak, heals the sick, exercises the possessed, opens prison cells to free the innocent from their chains. Prayer cleanses from sin, drives away temptations, stamps out persecutions, comforts the faint-hearted, gives new strength to the courageous, brings travelers safely home, calms the waves, confounds the robbers, feeds the poor, overrules the rich, lifts up the fallen, supports those who are failing, sustains those who stand firm. And what we ask is prayer. Prayer is dialogue with God. The Catechism reminds us, Jesus is always our perfect model for the life of prayer. In a recent papal audience, Pope Francis spoke of the great importance of prayer, reminding us that prayer opens us up to the Trinity, to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to the immense sea of God who is love. So it is in today's first reading from the book of Genesis, the author describes for us the encounter between Abraham, Sarah, and these three mysterious visitors near the Oaks of Mamre. While in the first verse, we're told that the Lord appeared to Abraham, the verses that follow go on to speak again of these three mysterious visitors. Not surprisingly, the passage came to be interpreted in light of Christian reflection on the mystery of the Blessed Trinity, the one God in three persons. Many of you will be familiar with a very beautiful Russian icon, usually referred to as Rublev's Trinity, but also called the Hospitality of Abraham. It was painted in the 15th century by St. Andrew Rublev. The original is in, in, the Mos in Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery, and experts refer to it as an unexcelled jewel of iconography. And as you can see for yourselves, the icon depicts three angelic figures seated around a small table, at the center of which is a chalice. Now, most would identify the angelic beings proceeding from left to right as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here, one author observes that the dominant impression is that of brightness. The yellows, the greens, the lilacs are very light and transparent. Others speak of the icon's intense spiritual beauty. And as experts tell us, the basic form of the composition is a circle. What's important for us to observe is that owing to the icon's particular use of what experts refer to as inverse perspective, the lines of the outer circle formed by the three figures appear to converge at a point outside the icon. 
we could say very simply that yes, the icon shows three angelic figures sitting around a table, but it's designed in such a way that the person standing in front of the icon becomes the fourth person at the table, the fourth person in the circle, or as one scholar observes, to the one who stands before the icon, a space is opened, inviting that person to stand in front and to join the angels around the table. So enter into the conversation with the three persons of the Trinity. Others speak of the way in which the icon is designed so as to welcome the person who stands before it into sacred space, into communion at the table of God. Another author expresses the idea that the icon invites the viewer to enter into the circle of the love of the Trinity, a circle that can never be broken by the powers of this world. Again, it's so important for us to make the effort to step into this circle, to draw closer to the table of conversation with God. From the moment of our baptism, we belong in the circle. At the same time, we should bear in mind that yes, the icon is beautiful, it's very nice to look at, but our approaching this table of communion and fellowship with the Trinity will make demands on us, as Jesus teaches his disciples throughout the Gospels, and as we see by his own example in the mystery of the cross. For as we draw closer to God in the life of prayer, as we enter more deeply into communion at the table of the Trinity, we're called to live more deeply the values of the gospel, to live the life of holiness, to give up the sinfulness that marks the human condition. In so doing, this will always overturn the values of this passing world in favor of the values of the kingdom of God. Indeed, the logic, we could say, the logic of the Sermon on the Mount reverses our worldly, secular, earthly values. Some speak of the logic of reversal, the divine logic that has worked through, at work throughout the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. We see this logic at work. For in the God and Christ-centered world of the New Testament, the Word of God became flesh. The first will be last, the last will be first. We see in Luke's Magnificat, Our Lady proclaiming, the greatness of God who has brought down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly, who has filled the hungry with good things and the rich has sent away empty. Jesus teaches us that those who would save their life must lose it. Ultimately, as Jesus himself shows us through his life and death, the logic of the gospel involves the reversal of the ego as we pray to the Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Or as Jesus says in the Gospel of John, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Finally, in today's Gospel, with Jesus performing these many miracles, we see a very inspiring example, dare I say, a countercultural example of the great care, love, and concern that Jesus has for the sick. And more and more, this contradicts the attitudes that we find in contemporary society. Jesus shows us then, who and what it is that we draw close to when we enter into the circle of the Trinity through prayer. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, let us in these difficult times make every effort to enter more deeply into the circle of God's love through the power of prayer. As a spiritual writer from the Christian East, East states very clearly, prayer is the test of everything. Prayer is the source of everything. Prayer is the driving force of everything. Prayer is the director of everything. If prayer is right, Everything is right, for prayer will not allow anything to go wrong. Brothers and sisters, let us now make our prayers and petitions to God in heaven. Let us pray for all who are sick, those who have died from, for those who are suffering from the various effects of the COVID pandemic. We pray to the Lord. For all those in the daily TV mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are facing significant transitions in their activities, health, relationships, or finances, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the intentions of today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, you know the needs of your people in this passing life. We ask you to hear the prayers we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, forever. Amen. 
is what I want. We come to share in divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Oh God, we ask you to receive us to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good. Receive, O Lord, the sacrificial conciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make an offering of heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed anew. So it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed that praise you, all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory, glory is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy for you should enter into my kingdom, but, but only say the word, Lord, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us join together in this prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, 
that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Surely it is.